Giant Steve is a ravenous monstrosity that hunts players and mobs alike. Compared to his once friends Herobrine and Alex, Giant Steve is the most bloodthirsty and aggressive of the monster trio, and the story of his fall to corruption is by far the most tragic. Why did the renowned hero of Minecraft become an unrecognizable monster? Find out as we dive into the tragic tale of Giant Steve. A thick fog rolled through the trees as well-armed warriors sprinted towards their quarry. Clad in armor and moving with precise coordination were the well-trained fighters of the ancient builders. They were hunting a dangerous game in the fog, but fear did not reach them because the great hero Steve was leading their charge. The relentless pursuit finally stopped as they had successfully driven giant Alex to the side of a rocky cliff face. The legendary being of myth was what they chased. The evil from their bedtime stories now towered before them. Alex turned to face her pursuers, with dark pits for eyes concealing all emotion. Get your ropes ready. I want to capture her alive. The builders were filled with a false sense of victory due to giant Alex's attempt to flee. They didn't know that she had merely lured them into her hunting ground. Giant Alex suddenly lashed out against her would-be captors, striking their formation. Builders flew backward as her bloody fists and kicks devastated their ranks. A desperate brawl ensued as the builders struck back against the giant. Alex toyed with her enemies as giant bolts of lightning crashed down, killing the unprepared. The builders slashed their enchanted weapons at her legs, but it was to no avail. Alex roared to the sky, instilling a deep fear into the builders' hearts. Steve tried to command his troops, but the fear and the bloodshed had driven them all to the brink. Oh, I don't want to die! I'm getting out of here! The builders <laughs> fled as Alex let out an evil laugh. Giant blocks of stone and dirt rained down on those who tried to escape, cutting even more lives short. Left alone beneath the towering monster was only Steve. Sword at the ready, his determination meant the fight was not over for him. He charged forward, but took a brutal blow from Alex, sending him tumbling back. Despite the grave injury, Steve was still ready to fight. Retreat now, Steve, or I will kill you, and then snuff out those builders you protect so preciously. Alex's eyes glowed white for a moment as their threat rang out. The ghastly words hurt Steve more than his wounds. He had organized this hunt to capture and cure Alex of her curse. It had been years since Herobrine transformed Alex into the monster she was now, and times had changed. The number of builders had dwindled, and Steve had started to regret many things about his past. Nevertheless, he wanted to set things right, beginning with his old friend Alex. As this tense moment grew longer, bloody villagers started to emerge from the fog. Bleeding cracks covered their skin skin as they shambled forward like undead thralls under the will of Giant Alex. Faced with the overwhelming numbers, Steve had to retreat. Giant Alex did not pursue, but merely watched on with lifeless eyes. The sun was setting as Steve finally returned to the Builder City. Despite being injured, he did not head home to rest or even seek medical attention. Instead, he first went to the War Room, where aggravated voices could already be heard. The War Council was discussing the failure of Steve's recent endeavor when he arrived. We will no longer allow you to endanger our people over your your personal obsession. You have no right. Not until a vote is held. Steve didn't know that a vote had already been held and his input wouldn't sway it. Steve was furious. Alex helped create the Builders Guild just like himself. She was just as much of a hero as he was, but they didn't seem to care. Why would they? The founding of the ancient Builders was before even their parents' time. Steve left the capital in a fit of rage. If they would not help him, he would do it himself. Steve set out on a search for a witch rumored to be knowledgeable in dark magic. Steve had wanted to send search parties out when he had first heard the rumor, but the council had always overruled him. So now unshackled by their regulations, Steve wandered the vast lands himself. Going from village to village, following where the rumors took him, he eventually came upon a secluded witch's lair. Approaching cautiously, he knocked on the door. As it opened, Steve was not met with a greeting, but an evil spell launching him back into the murky swamp waters. Thankfully, his enchanted armor protected him for the most part. Who dares come here? Not wasting a second, Steve sprung into action. He deftly dodged potions launched at him and knocked the witch back with a mighty swing. Steve threatened that if she continued fighting, things would get ugly. He only wanted to talk. Outmatched by the hero, the witch gave in. Inside, Steve began to explain his plight. He wanted to cure his friend, cursed by Herobrine. Fortunately for him, this was one of the witches who had helped make that curse and ended up serving Herobrine for a time. She explained that the evil magic they performed back then gave birth to a powerful curse. Alex was a host of the evil magic, now acting like a parasite 
and evil magic would be the only way to rid her of it. Desperate to save his friend, Steve eventually accepted this method. Without delay, Steve left the witch to gather the ingredients necessary for the cure. It is all going as you planned, master. Embarking out over distant lands was nothing new to Steve. He gathered ingredients from creatures as evil as the spell he needed them for. He collected ender pearls, spider eyes, and a totem of undying then delved into the depths of the nether and found soul sand and blaze rods. He even went to the end to get the chorus fruit. All the places Steve went, he had conquered before, and none could be a threat to him now. The last ingredient was a flower nourished with blood. Having never heard of such a flower, Steve tracked down a sniffer. These ancient mobs were Steve's best chance at finding the blood flower. Their large noses were made to sniff out rare flora due to the creature's love for them. With the sniffer's help, it wasn't long before Steve found the mysterious flower next to a pond of blood. Having the last ingredient, Steve returned to the witch. The witch toiled over the ingredients for three days before she had finally finished. At last, the cure was made. She gave it to Steve and explained how to use it. Overjoyed, Steve quickly set off back home. Steve returned home briefly to gather supplies for the upcoming fight. As he tried to leave the city, a few builders confronted him, concerned for his safety. He had been gone for a while and was now setting off to fight the infamous giant Alex alone. Their pleads fell on deaf ears, however, as Steve set off back to the foggy forest. He kept his eyes peeled and listened for any noises as he snuck through the eerie wood. Steve didn't encounter anything as he traversed further in. Retracing his steps, he returned to the location of the battle that took place the other day. After that, it didn't take much searching before Steve found a mysterious cave entrance. The opening to this cave was huge. Was it possibly Giant Alex's lair? With only one way to find out, Steve entered the cavern. As he continued, the thick fog of the forest persisted even here underground. Finally, after what seemed like hours, the cave opened up into a giant underground lair. A lake of blood churned under the rocky platforms of the cavern. Flowing down from the ceiling were pillars of lava, whose light pierced the thick red fog that actively choked Steve. Sneaking forward, Steve passed by piles of bone littering the cave. Standing beneath a waterfall of blood, Giant Alex seemed already aware of his presence. Without the element of surprise, Steve openly approached the bloody giant. Alex, I'm here to cure you, for real this time! <laughs> I don't need your cure! Today you die, Steve! The two charged, having both understood that a fight was unavoidable. Steve expertly ducked and dodged the powerful attacks of Giant Alex, returning the favor with a few superficial cuts from his blade. Large rocks were tossed through the air at Steve, but he endured the blows. The battle was intense as Steve started to circle Alex. The cure he was given came in two parts, a powder that he had to surround Alex with and a potion she had to drink. Sensing Steve was up to something, Alex attacked more feverishly. While putting down the last bit of powder, Steve was sent flying by a massive punch. He tumbled into the blood lake below. The cave fell quiet. Alex had won, or had she? Suddenly equipped with an elytra and fireworks, Steve soared up from below, flying right at giant Alex. But it was all for naught, as she snatched him out of the air. She was going to end this fight by eating him alive. Steve struggled as she went to take a bite. At the last second, he threw the potion down her throat. Without warning, evil magic exploded out from Alex, and Steve was dropped onto the cave floor. As the smoke and fog cleared, a normal-sized Alex was left standing alone and confused. Steve, is that you? You look so old. Huh, it, it worked. The cure worked. A ghostly shriek cut the celebration short. Above the reunited comrades, a blood-red apparition howled in the air. Its appearance was reminiscent of Giant Alex herself. Before either of them could act, the spirit fled into the stone with a terrifying wail. Steve realized that thing was the curse, and that the cure didn't destroy it. It only freed Alex from its possession. Alex and Steve agreed that they would need to hunt it down before it could possess someone else. But first, it was finally time for Alex to return home if they only knew what horrors awaited them. Steve and Alex returned to the Builder City and were met with celebration. At first, most of the Builders didn't know about Alex, but after Steve explained, they welcomed her like a returning hero. While Alex was reacquainted with the Builder's life she had long forgotten, Steve returned home to rest after a long day. Unfortunately, his night was plagued by nightmares. Steve found himself in an eerie world cloaked in fog. The trees and plant life gave off a ghostly, ethereal feeling. No matter what he did, Steve couldn't shake the ringing in his ears. Lost in this death-like realm, Steve started to hear voices and see strange entities out of the corners of his eyes. Disturbed, Steve ran faster and faster, aimlessly through the unknown realm. 
As he wandered, a gnawing hunger formed in his stomach. So overpowering was the pain that he soon thought of nothing else but eating. He tried to eat the plants around him, but like a ghost, they passed through his hands. Not long after, in a maddening search for food, Steve came across a strange structure. Inside, he found three gruesome monstrosities. Overcome by starvation, Steve tore into them with his bare hands, eating what flesh he could rip off of them. With a terrified shriek, Steve suddenly awoke in the middle of a field. What? It was… it was just a dream? Relieved that that horrible world wasn't real, Steve found his way back home. As he journeyed, he couldn't help but notice a gnawing hunger in his gut. Ignoring it, Steve got to work with Alex on how to deal with the loose curse. Days passed, and Steve was played more and more often with nightmares, making it hard to focus on finding the curse he had set free. Furthermore, strange occurrences started being reported in and around the city. First, a family of three were found murdered in their isolated forest cabin. Then, travelers reported that a village had been burnt down nearby. Steve tried to focus on the growing problems, but an ever-increasing hunger and tiredness kept him in a daze, only able to focus on one thing at a time. After another terrible night, Steve awoke in the middle of a desert. A dread fell over him as he noticed giant footsteps in the soft sand. It was too late. The curse had claimed someone else. As he examined the footprints for clues, Alex ran up to him. There you are! Have you been sleepwalking again? <laughs> it doesn't matter. I need to tell you something. Alex described <gasps> to Steve how she had suddenly awoken last night to searing eye pains. When she looked around, she could have sworn that she saw Herobrine in the reflection of her window. Steve, only half listening, dismissed it as a bad dream. Besides, they had more pressing things to focus on. How can you just dismiss me like that? If Herobrine is really- Alex, Herobrine disappeared hasn't been seen for ages, so please stop bringing him up. Also, do you have any food on you? I'm starving. Alex stormed off. She remembered where Herobrine's mansion was all those years ago. She was determined to investigate herself and was convinced that strange disturbances were more likely caused by Herobrine anyway. Alex's troubled past with Herobrine can be seen in Herobrine vs. Giant Alex on this channel, so don't forget to subscribe. Only 6.9% of you are currently subscribed, so it would be a big help and keep you up to date on the rest of Minecraft's lore. Steve barely registered that Alex had disappeared as he worked like a zombie on finding the curse. That night, in a deep slumber, Steve was once again trapped in that bleak dream. He could hardly take in the ghostly surroundings before an all-encompassing hunger overcame him. The pain in his gut was so great that he collapsed to the ground. Steve crawled forward, consumed by a ravenous madness. He had to find something, or someone, to eat. The nightmares had always ended when he ate. More and more phantoms appeared before Steve, but none came near, only floating by like lost souls. The murmuring whispers rang loudly in Steve's ears until a clear voice reached out to him. Hunger is never ending, but I can help. The voice told Steve that it could end his nightmare and help him become his true self. He just had to surrender himself to the voice willingly. Steve wanted to give in, but he knew something was off. Stricken by that realization, Steve snapped awake. Opening his eyes to reality, Steve found himself face to face with the curse he was hunting. You! Return to your dreams evermore and leave me your vessel. The phantom plunged into Steve, merging with him. A horrific scream rang out from Steve's home. The roof exploded outward as a giant monster stood up from within, causing nearby witnesses to flee in terror. The form of Giant Steve could be seen towering over the city houses. He was covered in bloody cracks and had blood pouring from one of the pits he now had for eyes. He roared to the sky to vent his unrelenting hunger. In a rage, he swung his mighty fists on other nearby buildings. Screams filled the city as Giant Steve turned his focus on the builders. In a bloody massacre, he hunted them down to satiate himself. Some brave warriors stood against him, but none could withstand his aggressive onslaught. Steve wreaked havoc until not a single builder was left alive. The streets ran red with blood as fire consumed the city hall. But the massacre didn't end there. Hunger compelled Steve to continue his hunt. The hero Steve, once a champion of the builders, unwittingly became the cause of their extinction. He scoured the land with frightening tenacity, killing all his former comrades. The world of Minecraft was left permanently changed by Giant Steve's destruction. His hunger still gnawing his insides, he now hunts the players that arrive to Minecraft. Those unlucky enough to become his target would see him in the distance stalking. Nothing they did could stop him from eventually coming to consume them. 
Watching Steve's derangement from afar was none other than Herobrine. All according to plan.